Hi, I'm Randy. Today I like to talk about Plasma Cutting 101. Um, the basics of cutting uh, with the plasma torch on the thermodynamics controller. So if you're ready, here we go. First thing we want to do is click on process. Um, and that opens our process selection window. In the process selection window we can choose if we want to cut with uh, plasma or gas. Gas would be like an oxy fuel torch. Um, in this case we're going to cut with plasma so we're going to select the plasma button. That opens uh, thermal dynamics process selection and here we can choose what material we're cutting, in this case mild steel, what thickness, in this case 10 gauge, and here is our available processes for mild steel 10 gauge. Um, we have 40 amp consumables in the torch. They are shielded consumables. Shielded meaning uh, the tip isn't exposed where you can see it. It's shielded with a shield cap. Um, so when we choose a process, we definitely want to choose the S for shielded, not the E for exposed. Um, and we have 40 amp consumables, so we're going to choose this one right here. The A stands for amperage. Um, here is our parts that need to be in the torch, our consumables. Um, here's a zoomed in view. Um, those are the parts that are in the torch as at the moment. Um, next, we're going to apply that process. So click on the fly, it tells us what to set the plasma to uh, for our amperage and our gas pressure. So we're going to say okay, it's already set. All right. Now, our process is set, the CNC knows what material, what thickness, what amperage we're going to cut, so our cut speeds, our pierce times, our ignition hives, pierce hives, cut hives, arc voltage, all that's set. Next thing we want to do is choose a part. So if we click on program, here we can choose between download and shapes. Download would be a download like a part from a thumb drive, a pre-made part, um, or maybe a network drive. Um, in this case, we're going to choose shapes. That's going to open our macros shape library. Here is uh, available shapes we have in the controller that we can modify. Um, in this case, we're just going to choose a basic square. All right, so the red line is letting us know the width. Um, what we are asking us what we want the width of our part to be. In this case, we're going to say three. And the length. In that case, we're going to say three as well. And okay. All right. It's asking us if we want to rename the part. Um, in this case, we're not going to rename it. If we wanted to save it, um, we could give it a name and save it somewhere on like the C drive or a thumb drive or network. But it's going to be a one time use part. So we're just going to click on OK. All right. This window here is the Promotion Nest window. Um, it's all the tools uh, available for modifying your part or parts, um, whether you want to make like a nest of parts on a sheet, um, if you just want to modify one part, uh, you can do all that here in the nest window. A lot of other tools in here too, but um, when you think of the nest window, it's modifying your part, preparing your part to cut. Um, we're happy with it, so we're just going to send it to cut. So we're going to click on the red torch up here on the top left hand corner all right and then that sends our part from the nest window to the cut window all right next what we want to do is find the theoretical start point of this program so we're going to press the manual mode button we're going to turn our laser pointer on and we're going to jog our torch to that start point since our part is not on a plate it's not nested we want to not have our laser pointer right on the edge of the plate. We want to have a little bit of a buffer. So we're about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the plate and both the X and the Y. Um, so that's a good starting point. So we're going to press zero. Next thing we want to do is make sure our speed pot is at 100%. Um, if the speed is not at 100%, what will happen is the torch won't track the plate with arc voltage. It'll stay at a fixed height. Um, you want your torch to track the plate, ideally. Um, if your plate goes uphill, um, the torch won't follow it uphill, it'll just crash into the plate. Or if your plate goes downhill, the torch will never follow it downhill. Um, but if you're at 100%, the torch will track the plate. Um, all right, so we're at 100%, we're zeroed out, and I guess now we're ready to cut the part. So we're gonna press our program start. Bye.
cards that come to the one on one here at the end. It's asking if you want to return to zero, yes or no. Um, in this case, we'll say yes. Return to zero, the torch just goes back to the start point of that program that we just cut. Um, let's uh, go into manual and jog over to another start point and then press our zero button. So we talked a little bit about arc voltage, um, about torch tracking the plate with arc voltage. What arc voltage is, it's the measurement between the electrode and the plate. Um, it's measuring that voltage between those two. There's a lot of things that could throw off that arc voltage. It's not set in stone. It's probably something you want to adjust. I always try to tell people once you start a program, look to see where your torch to work distance is. If it's not where you want it to be, you can adjust that arc voltage. Um, your cut charts tell you what, what your uh, cut height should be. Um, if you're too far away from the plate because of your arc voltage being too high, what will happen is uh, you'll get a lot of bevel in your cut. Um, in some really extreme conditions, what will happen is uh, the torch will be too far from the plate and you just won't cut all the way through the plate. It'll just edge the top of the plate. Um, when your arc voltage is too low, what will happen is your torch will just be too close to the plate. Um, it could cause collisions and also damage your consumables. So what we're going to do, um, our arc voltage for this process, it was pretty good. Um, our part came out nice, um, at least from what I can see here, you know, nice straight edges. And when we were cutting, it looked like the cut pipe was good. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to purposely bring our arc voltage too low. Just so you can see what will happen if your arc voltage is too low. So we're taking down to extreme. We're going to 75. It was 110. Um, now we're down at 75 volts. Um, we're already at a good starting point, so we're going to press the program start. What happened, our arc voltage was too low, the torch thought it needed to get closer to the plate, and it just crashed right into the plate. So that's the arc voltage too low. Now, let's go to the other extreme. Let's go to arc voltage too high. Let's take it 135. Um, this IHC system error, this is basically letting us know that we had a collision, so we can close that out. Um, to resume cutting, let's make sure we're at a good starting point. Uh, looks like I need to back up just a little bit. Should be good right there. Alright, let's resume cutting. Alright, you can see we were uh, a good probably almost half an inch away from the plate. Um, you can see we weren't cutting through the plate, we were just throwing a rooster tail. Um, and this was because our arc voltage was too high. So let's bring it back down to the correct arc voltage, which was 110, roughly 110. Um, and we will we'll resume cutting, but first make sure, well since we were just etching the plate, we probably should back up all the way to where we lost our cut, which we way back here. And then press the torch on off. Alright, very close to work basically. You can always adjust that value on the fly. Um, when you make these changes by bringing the arc voltage up or down, it will make changes while it's cutting so you can see um, cause and effect. Um, definitely, ideally, use the arc, adjust your arc voltage till you get that good torch to work distance and you almost always get good parts. Uh, for those of you guys that don't want to, guys and girls that don't want to adjust the arc voltage, you just want to press start and go. Um, if you open your IHC window, IHC stands for Intelligent Height Controller, click on Setup and then go to Advanced tab. Over here you have AVC sampling. If you check that box, OK and apply. Then close out here. From there you see it's no longer a voltage, it's a distance that you see. 
and we also have this new button over here, new parts. Um, the way ABC sampling works is when the torch is pierces and starts moving a little bit, the CNC is going to take a sample of that arc voltage. Um, and it's going to take several samples and kind of come up with what it thinks the correct uh, arc voltage should be. Um, just note, if you're using ABC sampling, when you do change your process, when you go to a different material, different thickness, or you change your consumables, always be sure to click on new parts. Um, new parts, what it does is it'll clear out those samples and then start building new samples for new arc voltage settings. All right, well, that's Plasma Cutting 101. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye now.